Hello! Today I'd like to review Oxygen. This is a colony management game Trying where volcanoes have turned the air toxic. Failure. You lead a small group of scavengers as they struggle Thank to survive and rebuild in the ruins of civilization. Special thanks go to Turquoise Revival Games, grab the game and upgrade point for the review key. This review is based on 20 hours of gameplay, all opinions are solely the authors. You're busy people, so let me answer your most pressing question first. Are you going to enjoy it? The 30 second spiel is that this game is all about surviving against the elements. You have to manage your survivors in getting food, water and scavenging the ruins around you for materials. The weather and the climate are your key challenges, especially the toxic winds that can kill off dozens of survivors if you're not careful. Researching new techs and sending long range expeditions to explore other locations will be the key to your long term success. This is a game that will appeal to players who enjoy colony management sims that test your ability to manage competing needs efficiently. If that sounds like something you'd like, then stay with me and I'll delve deeper into the details. Have you ever heard about the unique twist provinces? in this particular management sim is These that the world is toxic. Volcanoes erupted all over the world and now the air is unbreathable. The small group only survived because you have access to an oxygen generator and that's where the game begins. There's five maps at the moment and you can tweak the difficulty settings to make things harder or easier for yourself. And the nice feature is that you can disable some mechanics altogether if you find them annoying or if you just want to try out different things. Personally I recommend playing on normal when you're learning and enabling tasks because they tend to guide you on what to do as well as providing bonuses when you complete them. You'll be doing many of the same things that you do in most colony management sims like providing housing, water and food. But a key difference is that the air is toxic and your survivors have to carry oxygen tanks to keep them alive as they travel, scavenge for loot and work in buildings. This oxygen is provided by the oxygen generator at the heart of the colony. You don't have to worry about pipes or how it's delivered but every home and building can be provided with oxygen. So for instance, you could power a mine to avoid having people getting sick or stopping work because they need to refill their tank. This is not free though and costs power. At first you'll have to scavenge coal to burn for power. Later on you can research mining for a more sustainable source and more efficient ways to mine coal. But the game has variable weather and it can turn for the worse. When the toxic winds blow, your power requirements double and your survivors run the risk of getting sick and dying from the poison. Running out of coal or having a bunch of people falling sick and dying during a windstorm is one of the most likely ways for your game to end. To avoid that, you need to research renewable sources of power. The first ones are gas generators to tap the volcanic vents that regularly pop up around you. More advanced power generators like turbines to tap rivers for water and solar panels to get energy from the sun can be unlocked later on. But they also have downsides. Gas vents only last for a few weeks. When the rivers freeze, your turbines will stop and your solar panels don't work at night. You have to make sure you've filled your battery and stocked up on coal because these conditions become worse as the years pass. So the key to the game is to stock up for the bad times. You have to make sure you have enough water, food and energy to keep you alive when the lakes freeze over and your water purifiers stop working and you can't fish anymore. Researching new technologies and more efficient ways to produce materials is very important to keeping up with the needs of a growing population. But some techs can only be discovered by finding and sending expeditions to remote locations off the map. A group of your survivors will set off with supplies and explore these locations. There's risk that they'll meet disaster, but if you're lucky, they'll find more survivors to join your community and more materials to replenish your stocks. What you're really after with these expeditions are unique technologies that are better than anything you can research. For example, you can find the plans for a sea power generator that works in any weather. Trees can also be found and planted to provide a safe bubble of clean air around them. If you take care of them, and that means no sick people or need for oxygen tanks in that bubble, but it's not just about staying alive. The game will regularly give you tasks to fulfill. It might be to stock up on water and food before the winds blow or the lakes freeze. Or it might be to construct new types of buildings. The time and usually the reward is a bit more happiness for your people and some free goods. The happiness is important because your community makes a vote of confidence every year which is 36 days in game and if you fail, it's also game over. And the requirements to pass the vote of confidence get higher every year. So players are forced to keep growing their population which in turn grows their energy and food needs which means that they have to keep researching and exploring. Fundamentally the game plays like many other colony management sims. 
It's got the same gameplay loop of assigning your population to gather food, water and energy. Making sure you've got a good stock of important materials and researching to unlock new buildings and techs. The most unique aspect about the game is the weather. It acts as a moment of crisis and tests the way you've been planning. If you haven't stocked up sufficiently, then it can easily be game over. And there's several cases during my test plays where storms lasted for multiple days and I was nervously watching my water and energy stocks as they dwindled to almost nothing. I mostly played on normal as I mentioned earlier and it wasn't too difficult. But I did a test run on hard early on and it didn't last very long because your starting manpower is only barely enough to keep you going and resource gathering is much slower. It seems that after you learn the game, playing on hard would fit best with the premise of the game where you're struggling for survival against the odds. Personally I also found the task system a bit too restrictive. Essentially you find yourself holding off on researching new techs or constructing new buildings just in case you get a new task popping up. Because at time, there's occasions when you just don't have enough time to gather the resources to fulfill them, so it ends up discouraging the player from doing things, which is against the spirit of this type of game. Since release, the game's been patched to allow you to defer these tasks, so that's an option, although you don't get to see what the task requires before you make the choice. In some ways, the free goods from the tasks also go against the spirit of a survival game. Where are these free goods coming from? They do serve to guide newer players when they're learning the game, but you can turn that off if you want a more hardcore and realistic approach. Though the downside of turning them off is that the tasks are an important way to boost the morale of your people and really help with votes of confidence. A positive point about the game is that the interface is very easy to use and you can readily find the information you need. There's filters for what scrap is available at different locations. You can find where your scavengers are currently working and you can easily see which buildings are drawing power. It's also very easy to jump to where your survivors are working. Just clicking on the list of workers will jump you between the relevant buildings and there's a single button you can press to turn off all buildings using oxygen. The user interface is very nice and you'll be focusing on planning and managing workers instead of trying to find information, which is exactly what you want in a game like this. Overall, if you enjoy colony management sims, oxygen is well worth a look. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.